Welcome to 5 Minutes Geography. Today we will explore a truth that surprises everyone about Australia. Australia, a continent of staggering scale, ancient rock and vibrant life, stands apart its vast sunburnt heart fringed by a thin green ribbon of settlement. Most Australians cling to the coasts, leaving the immense interior and far north to nature. The north, closer to Jakarta than Sydney should be a gateway to Asia, yet remains a sparsely populated wilderness. Darwin, the largest northern city, is more an outpost than a metropolis. Why has this resource-rich expanse never birthed a major city? The answer lies in climate, geography and history. Australia is the driest inhabited continent. Its cities follow the water, thriving only where the land is forgiving. The great cities, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, cluster in temperate, well-watered corners. The north, by contrast, is a land of dramatic extremes governed by the wet and dry seasons. Its silence and emptiness are shaped by relentless natural forces demanding unique adaptation from all who call it home. To understand the North's quiet, you must first understand the continent's unforgiving heart. Geography is destiny in Australia. The Great Dividing Range along the east and southeast catches rain, creating fertile corridors ideal for European-style settlement. Here, the British found familiar landscapes and built cities like Sydney, where water and mild climate made agriculture and urban life possible. The South became a magnet for settlers and investment, its cities growing into bustling centres of commerce and culture. The North, meanwhile, is flat, ancient and nutrient-poor, with rivers that flood and vanish with the monsoon. Large-scale agriculture is nearly impossible, and the foundations for a major city simply don't exist as they do in the South. The South prospered, its cities connected and thriving, while the North remained a distant, mythic frontier. The North was seen as a place to exploit resources, not to build lasting urban society. Australia turned its back on its northern shores, focusing its energy and ambition on the temperate South. The pattern of settlement was set by the land itself. The North's challenges kept it on the periphery of the nation's story. The northern climate is a force unto itself, monsoonal, unpredictable and often hostile. The dry season brings blue skies and manageable heat, but the wet unleashes torrential rains, flooding vast areas and isolating communities. Cyclones, like the infamous Cyclone Tracy in 1974, have devastated cities like Darwin, leaving scars that shape how people build and live. The environment here is not just challenging, it's dangerous, with tropical diseases, crocodiles and deadly jellyfish. Even the plants can be perilous. This is not a landscape for the unprepared. For early European settlers, the tropics were alien and intimidating. Building in the north is expensive, Homes must withstand cyclones, infrastructure must survive floods, and constant maintenance is required. These costs make large-scale urban development daunting. The climate that creates such a unique ecosystem also deters dense settlement. The North's wildness is both its beauty and its barrier. Here, nature always has the final word. The dream of a northern metropolis is constantly tested by the land itself. Long before Europeans arrived, Aboriginal Australians thrived here adapting to the land's rhythms with deep ecological knowledge. Their societies were mobile, moving with the seasons, and their connection to country was spiritual and practical. They mastered the cycles of flood and fire, finding abundance where others saw only hardship. Their settlements were networks of camps and sacred sites, not cities, but they flourished for millennia. The British, arriving with different priorities, tried to impose European farming and settlement on the north. Early outposts like Port Essington failed spectacularly, unprepared for the climate, isolation and disease. The South, rich in wool and gold, drew the Empire's focus and resources. The North became a strategic afterthought, seen as a drain rather than an opportunity. The land's challenges reinforced its reputation as a hostile backwater. The North was left to languish, its ancient cultures enduring while colonial ambitions faded. The vision of a great northern city has lingered for generations. Darwin, as a Singapore of the South, a gateway to Asia, yet population remains the fundamental obstacle. 
With just a quarter million people in the entire Northern Territory, there's no critical mass to justify massive infrastructure investment. This creates a cycle. Without people, there's no infrastructure. Without infrastructure, people don't come. The tyranny of distance is most acute here, with small populations scattered over vast distances. The North's economy relies on mining and energy, industries that use fly-in, fly-out workers rather than building permanent communities. Wealth is extracted, but cities are not built. The dream of a bustling metropolis fades against the reality of economics and geography. The North remains a place of transience, not permanence. Its riches flow south, but its population stays small. Today, the North is shaped by new forces, indigenous land rights, environmental protection, and strategic military presence. Vast areas have been returned to traditional owners, making any development a matter of negotiation and cultural respect. The North's national parks, like Kakadu and the Daintree, are global treasures, protected by strict laws. Conservation now outweighs the old dreams of conquest and urban sprawl. The military maintains a strong presence, but its bases are self-contained, not seeds for new cities. The North is a mosaic, ancient traditions, high-tech mining, pristine wilderness, and strategic outposts. The idea of a massive city feels out of step with the region's reality and values. Development happens, but on the North's own terms. The frontier is no longer empty, but complex and contested. Its future is shaped by balance, not by conquest. The story of Northern Australia is a lesson in the power of geography. The South's gentle climate and fertile soils allowed cities to flourish. The North's wildness set firm limits. Indigenous Australians adapted and thrived, but colonial ambitions faltered against the land's might. History and economics reinforced the North's secondary status. The modern economy extracts wealth without building cities and the costs of overcoming nature remain immense. The North endures as Australia's great frontier, home to resilient communities, ancient cultures and spectacular wilderness. It is vital to the nation, but unlikely ever to rival Sydney or Melbourne. Its value lies in its remoteness, its wildness and its unique character. The North's destiny is shaped by forces greater than ambition. Here, the land itself writes the final chapter. That's all for today. Like, subscribe and share the channel and join us again for another exciting episode. Goodbye.